Good morning, OCSB. Welcome to uh, this morning's live stream on Jamboard and Screencastify. And what we really love about these tools is these are tools that you can use for a thousand different reasons. They're collaborative. They are. Uh, they can facilitate oration. They can help kids speak their ideas. You can use them together and get all kinds of new different things. So what we really want you to think about is... Um, how can how can these tools serve you? Because it's not about the tool, it's about what you what pedagogy you bring to them. So this morning, if you want to get a copy of the slides, um, we're using www.yelkey.com backslash arrive. So if you go to that URL, you'll be able to see the, um, the slide deck. Um, if you're watching this on the YouTubes, we're going to put uh, the link in the doobly doos underneath the YouTube. So um, again, yellkey.com backslash arrive, and you'll be able to pull a copy of these slides. We've got lots of resources in there for you. And hopefully it's something that will tweak some um, ideas for you this morning so that when you move towards uh, your activity planning for today and the rest of the week, that there'll be some cool things that you'll want to get done. So before we get this started this morning, I want to acknowledge that we are settlers on unceded Algonquin territory. And again, as we start the new year, I am constantly... Uh, uh, what I, I love to think about is the, the, the thousands of years of knowledge and wisdom that have um, lived on this land in, in the form of Canada's Indigenous people, specifically the Algonquin people, and they have prayed, they have learned, they have played, and they have worked on this land um, long before um, Canada was complete, you know, let alone the OCSB. So, um, uh, so I just like to acknowledge that. And also I would like to center us in prayer this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we are going to look a little bit at Jamboard. We're going to look at Screencastify, and we're also going to look at uh, where to get more help. Um, I have the glorious and wonderful Catherine Wake with me this morning, so um, hopefully she is going to... Good morning, uh, we're everybody! Gonna, <laughs> we're going to show you what it looks like to actually start a jam in a meet, because that's going to be something that you're probably going to want to do. Um, and the beauty of doing that is that well, we'll get into that. So, um, so just so you know what's in this slide deck, um, we're going to talk about jams. Um, so Jamboard is a product that it's the whiteboard product that that um, Google has created. So it integrates with all of their programs. It's savable in Drive. It works directly in Meet. Um, it is accessible from K through 12 and old. Um, so principals, if you're sitting there hanging out with us, this is a really great way to use with your administrative staff uh, or your, uh, not your administrative, well, them too, but uh, people on your staff. Um, staff members, this is a really great, great way to uh, collaborate, pull ideas, um, check-ins, all those kind of components can really be useful with Jamboard. Um, so essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. And again, if you want a copy of the slides, it's yellkey.com, like ah, dot uh, key, like uh, you open the door, yellkey.com backslash arrive. And again, we'll, we'll go over that again towards the end. Um, but you can see here in my, um, my GIF here on my screen, you're going to go to uh, go to your drive. You click new. You have to go to more, and then you go to more apps, and you'll see Jamboard. And I'm going to show you on another slide here. I'm just going to go to a new tab, and you can also go to Jamboard.google.com. This will give you all the jams that you have associated to your account. Why is that useful? Well, I need a jam. Okay, I'm going to see what I already have. Here I go. But you can also see that there are templates that you can make that you can then push out to students. Um, so just so you know, it, it works. Think of it as um, Google Slides, but empty, or if you want to fill it up, that everybody can collaborate and there's no uh, limitation to um, using, um, you can use a stylus, you can use um, the finger, you can, um, you can use the mouse, and then you can create on those boards. So jamboard.google.com, or if you're somebody who likes to organize, you can go into Drive, figure out where you want to store that jam so it's in your grade three uh, language folder. You could open up your language folder, folder and then do um, new, more, Jamboard. And then it'll open and save in that file, okay? So um, I'm going to share this tab instead because I want to show you the integration. So there's Wake and hopefully she's there. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how easy, once you're inside a Meet, how you can share with um, your students. 
So I'm going to go down here on the white bar at the bottom. And I am going to now anybody in your meet can join can create a jam. So just be careful of that, uh, or be aware of that. So I'm going to go to those three action dots in the bottom corner. So three action dots, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say open a jam. So what's really great is that I can either start a new jam board or I can choose one for my drive. So again, you just saw in my drive that I have quite a few of them. And so um, we can pull out that, but I'm going to show you kind of the basic tools. So I'm going to start a new jam board and notice it says a link to the jam will be sent to others in the meeting. So this is going to happen through the chat. Okay. So I'm going to start a new jam board. All right, so we can see here it was it's creating a jam down in the bottom right hand corner or left hand corner. It says creating a jam. And then it says, oh, these are the people who are sitting in this meet. So this it invites everybody who is in this meet and it will also um, connect it to people who aren't necessarily sitting in that meet at that time, but have been invited. Um, so that becomes really, really useful. Um, so now um, I'm going to um, share, so I'm going to share, hopefully, um, actually, just give me a second, I'm going to stop presenting, and I'm going to present um, my entire speech just so that you don't miss anything here. Okay, um, let's try that again. So I am going to create the jam. So again, there's no harm in doing it again, right? We all have to practice where we can. So three dots, go up, start a jam. Here we go. Starting a new whiteboard. It's going to ask me, do you want to share with Catherine? And I say, yes, I do. So I'm going to share with one person, but instead of viewing it, I need them to be able to edit it. Okay. And um, again, remember that our students are different, have different domain names. So we're OCSB.ca and they are OCSB student domains. So uh, make sure that you keep that in mind when you're going through on this. And then you're going to hit send. So what's going to happen is in the chat. OK, there is a little note to everybody in the community that this is or in this meet um, that it's ready to rock and roll. So mine popped up on a separate window. So here it is here. And you can see there's Wake and she's there joining the, the, uh, the Wake. <laughs> so she's already started playing with the tool. So I'm just going to walk through some of these tools that she is playing. But I want you to see how this populates as she starts to play. So you can. Um, uh, here are your undo and your redo buttons. You can zoom in and zoom out. So this becomes really handy if you want students to make something that's very, very small that's going to be part of a bigger picture. Um, so you can zoom out and zoom in. You can also set a background. So there's a whole variety of different things. So I'm just thinking of you glorious math teachers. Maybe you want some, some dots and you want to set that. Maybe you want to practice cursive writing um, or some regular writing. Maybe you want... Um, some graph paper, right? So all of these options are already there. Notice this button called clear frame. If I hit this button, all of Catherine's beautiful art will disappear. So we don't wanna do that. But notice if everybody has uh, editing rights, everybody can click, anybody can click that frame. So um, our biggest suggestion, anytime we use a new tool, provide time for the students to be ridiculous, for the students to get that clear frame out of their system so that that doesn't become a problem. We know that kids are gonna be silly. Um, we know that kids are gonna do some unique and wonderful things. So again, I would encourage you to have them play with the different components just to make sure um, that that's available. So I'm just gonna go up here to these little one-to-one. -one. If I expand this, you'll see that I can see the meat that we're looking right now, but I can add a new frame. So I can add the frame that, um, either to the beginning or to the end. Excuse me, there's a maximum of 20 frames. So again, if you want more, more than that, you might have to think about doing two or three different jams and connect, connect them together. I can also duplicate up here the three action dots. Action dots make me excited. What can I do? So there's your duplicate. So I can take Catherine's beautiful piece of work or something that I've created that I want the students to work on in multiple tasks or in multiple boards. I can make a, a duplication of that and I can send the students to those different pieces. So if I want Catherine, if I want students to work on this one, what I can do, okay, so I'm gonna go delete that again. And I'm gonna, oh, I'm on, so I you can see that I'm on the Zoom. So I'm going to go fit. And then now I'm gonna say, uh, I want C Wake to be here, C Money, and then I want um, Tara to be here. 
And then I want, um, so I can put the initials on there. Okay, so again, I can identify which ones I want. Okay, and then I'm also, you're gonna see all of your list of students here. And you can also rename it. So you can see that right now it's named uh, the title of my meet and then in which meet and when we did it, okay? I can download it as a PDF. So if I'm a math teacher and I've been showing some math work, I can then download it that as a PDF. Again, watch for accessibility. Do you have students who need to be able to read that with uh, a screen reader? Because that's not gonna be your friend. We do have some tricks um, about using Equatio with um, Jamboard uh, in, in the links in our slide deck as well. You can also save the frame as an image. So say students create some beautiful mind map, um, you can pull that image and then use that in your workspace, okay? You can also send it to your students. Maybe it's, uh, it's helping them frame uh, planning a narrative or something. You can, again, lots of different ways that you can do it. You can also make a copy and you can also see a revision history. So this is really annoying, but if I go control, alt, shift, H, Maybe control alt shift H, maybe I have to do it. Nope. I should be able to pull up a version here three. So again, um, unlike slides, unlike docs, there isn't a file so that you can say revision history. Who deleted everything? Um, there, there is a shortcut to that and mine is not working right now. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. And I'll have Catherine wants to jump on and oh, she knows what it is. I have control alt shift H, but anyway, we'll get back to you. We'll make sure it's in the slide deck. Okay. So now I'm going to just go down the left hand side here. What we're going to do, we have our pen tools. So you have different colors. You also have different styles of pens. So let's go back to this jam. You can see a little bit different. So I have, um, so I'm going to pick blue. So I have regular pen. I have marker, a little thicker. I have highlighter. So again, what we've seen really successfully is taking a screenshot of a, of a reading that the students are doing, which of course exists in other places in order to allow accessibility. Um, but then you can have students go in and underline um, hyperbole. You can have them underline adjectives or whatever you're doing. Um, and the last pen here is more of a painting tool. Okay, so even that in, in my opinion might be better for highlighting. Um, but you can see as I go over it, it gets darker. So it's kind of like a watercolor that way. And you have your erase tool, you've got your pointing tool, You've got your sticky notes. And you have different colors of sticky notes. Fun fact, I don't know why it does this, but it stacks, oh, it's changed since the last time I played with this. It used to stack all the sticky notes on top of each other, which was super annoying. And now it doesn't because Google actually updates their, <laughs> makes their products better on the most part. So again, you can stick the, the post-it notes. You can also pull from the images so you can upload from your device. Here's the really handy thing. If I wanted to take a picture of my work, there it is, and I can insert. So if I was a kinder student and I was trying to show you the amazing work that I did, that's a way I could do it. Um, I can also uh, Google image search. So of course, I'm gonna start the wombat because Blake knows that's my favorite. So there's the adorable wombat. And then I can plop that in there, okay? And again, move that around. I have shapes, so if I wanna talk about what shapes do, oh, they added an arrow, I'm so excited. We also have a text box, so then I can type in later, and of course. And then if I wanna draw attention to my mom's lovely uh, knittle, knit, knit work here, I can do that with, and it just disappears, okay? So that's Jamboard. So there's lots happening in there, um, and I'm just going to minimize that. Okay, so that's Jamboard in a nutshell. So the next tool um, that I wanted to, I think I covered it. Anyway, it, this is just cursory, my friends. So um, we wanna make sure that you know um, that it, this is available to you and that um, you can have access to it. Um, okay, actually, I'm gonna just jump back in here. All right. So um, again, you can get a copy of the slides at yellkey.com backslash arrive. Um, so again, here's an example of a Jamboard. So they have the written component and then they're using the highlight tool to pull out relevant things in the text, okay? This one, they have a, a warm up. Uh, again, it's a math example. Um, here are uh, four concepts. The students add a, uh, a post-it note and then they say how they would um, manipulate these characters to make the math um, to evaluate to 24. 
Um, we have a whole bunch of examples. So literacy, ESL, there's some science examples. There's some ELA examples. Again, these are from, I think these are generally pitched to um, older students. So like grade five, six up. Um, but you just have to do a quick Google search, Jamboard for Kinder, and you will be off to the races. Okay, and then uh, Mary Lou Deal has done some incredible work around how do we get math on these sort of uh, math spaces or Jamboards. So there's lots of resources for you. Um, Screencastify is my favorite tool in the whole wide world. And the reason is, is because it's universally useful. So here is my Screencastify extension right here. If you are, if you've never used Screencastify, you're gonna go over here to staff portal and you're going to click on Screencastify here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna rocket you to the extension in, um, in Google land and you can add it to your Chrome profile. Students already have this push to them, which means that you don't have to do anything except ask them to use it. And we love that about this. So again, it's gonna show up here at the top right hand corner. And if it, if once you've installed it and it doesn't, uh, it, it's not there immediately. You're going to go over here to this little puzzle piece and you're going to look for it in there. And what I like to do is when I click the little pin to be blue, that means it's going to show up here as opposed to having to swipe in. I like to save myself clicks on, on the tool so I can go off. Okay. So there is Screencastify. So essentially, it's the easiest tool to use. Once it's set up, you have it really prompts you really clearly on how to allow your microphone uh, and allow your camera. And so um, I'm just gonna pop. No, I'm gonna leave it here. Um, so, uh, oh, wrong bongo. Okay, let's say I wanna explain um, in, in every one of our how to videos, we always wanna explain um, what's happening uh, on, on a page. So I'm going to explain the staff portal to you. So here I go, and I'm gonna grab the screencast. I have a few different options. I have, I can just do just the browser tab. So if I have an assignment, for example, and I want to talk my students through the example, the uh, assignment, and then I'm going to push that, and that's going to do asynchronously, but then they can watch my instructions over and over again. So you know you have that friend who just it goes in one ear and out the other. They could just keep watching the video, and magic, they can pause it and go, oh, did I do that, or what did she say about this or that? So if you've screencasted uh, the instruction, it literally takes 30 seconds. You instruct it, it, that uh, information, that's one less email you're gonna get and or one less interruption that you might get. You just say, no, I, it's, on the, it's on the video. Sorry, it's on the instructions. And what I would actually do is take this link that it's gonna generate and put it right on the instructions of the activity itself. So that's the browser tab. So it's just that brow browser, which means if you're gonna navigate away from that and you want the students to see you navigate away from it, then you're gonna use the desktop, which means do the whole kit and caboodle, or if you want them to see your gorgeous, lovely face because you miss them, or if you're asking the students to show their lovely face. I know French teachers really like to be able to see how their mouth moves. Um, this is a way that you might be able to get them to communicate. So you can see here, my little microphone is jumping. I'm very loud, it's getting up to red right now. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's telling me that my microphone is working and I can also embed my webcam. The great thing about the webcam is that little, once it gener starts the um, webcam, I can move it around the page, okay? I'm gonna show more options, so it has a countdown. So if you have friends who might need more time, you can change that. Um, it allows drawing tools. So a drawing tool allows, I'm thinking of my phys ed friends out here, you can have students do a movement and then they can use the Screencastify over top of a video or an image to pull, okay, look at my, uh, my knee angle here, look at how I use my golf swing or whatever, and they can annotate just like they do on TSN. Okay, and the last one is system audio. So if I'm recording a meet or a conversation between myself and my and my somebody else on a Google Meet, I need to use system audio so that it's both collecting my voice as well as the person I'm talking to. Okay, so then now I'm gonna hit record. Okay, so there I go. Okay, so I'm using two screens here. So, um, so here I am talking about Screencastify. I'm telling you about the all the pieces. I can see that it's working because I've got the little red dot at the top. And there I am. I can also make this big so that you're going to see me in giant. Um, I don't know where that happened. Oh, it's an adventure. I don't know where that went. Um, oh, ah, ah, what's happening? I don't know, but it's okay because it's going to be fine. 
And then I'm just going to hit stop because I'm all done stopping. So you can see that I can delete it. So if I hate it, I'm going to delete it. Trust me, there's no point in perfection. I don't know if you've watched enough of our videos. We're not perfect, but it gets done and the students need. And you can also see that you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And our students need to see that perfection is, is, is not necessarily something we always need to strive for. I can also restart my video. So if I'm totally, if it's been like if I choked all over my words, I can use uh, the start again. I can also pause. So then I can move around or I can erase the screen or I can do anything like that. Um, and then have it re-record again. So you can see I'm up to a minute of recording and then I can hit stop. Now, what is beautiful about this program is it automatically opens a brand new tab. Okay, you can see it's doing it right now. It's opening a brand new tab. It can, it's gonna give you a preview. You can trim both the end or the beginning. Okay. Our unlimited version allows you to, to film up to two hours. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, what statistics, what studies have shown is that um, people only watch a video for about five minutes. So um, you're better off doing lots of short videos than one long video. And I can certainly tell you from our YouTube channel, um, uh, our viewer viewing list drops off after about 30, um, about, about two and a half minutes is about as long as the video people want to watch videos for. So it gives, it, it stamps it for the time that you took it. Okay. So, okay. So this is my, 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 uh, title. Okay. And then I can open the editor, which again, if you, if it's more than five minutes, you can't actually use the editor. Um, if you want to do longer things to edit, then you, I would suggest you use the video, which will have some more PD on uh, we video in the future. It's going to tell you some information about the video, or you could scrap it all together. And then down on this side, you can have that it's going to, it's going to save in Google Drive. So I can click on more options here, and I have some options. So again, this is going to be useful to your students. So what I want to do is I'm going to make it uh, unlisted, which means that I can share it outside the OCSB. I can share it with my OCSB students. Okay. Um, if I just, if I'm maybe uh, talking through, I have my notes on, on a spreadsheet and I want to tell a student how they're doing, I might use a screencastify and then I would make it uh, private so that I would only send it to that student and that student alone. Okay. So you can see public at the OCSB. So it's under um, just our domain. And then those are the different options. OK, if I click on here, it's going to show where where it is on Drive, because, again, it's automatically saved into Drive. OK, and then I can also uh, upload to Edpuzzle. Really, really great tool. So, again, that's for another day. You can publish to YouTube if you're feeling uh, excited and get a, an embed code if you're um, you want to em embed it onto a website or something like that. OK, the last few options that you have here are downloading. So I can download my minute video and then I can put it in other places. Um, this is what we use for WeVideo. I can export it as an MP4, so then it can be um, viewed on other uh, devices. I can export the audio. So again, if I'm doing a podcast, that might be the only, that might be a way I can just export the audio. And one of them that we really love is export the animated GIF. So again, this allows you to have a tiny little short video. And again, usually less than um, 10 seconds would be a loop of instructions. Um, but the beauty of a GIF is that you can make that little video and pop it into a Google Doc. Um, so I showed you that on, on here. Uh, this is a GIF we made with Screencastify. So you do a quick little video and then you export as a GIF and then you can use it. So again, it can go into things like Google Docs where you can't embed a video, okay? Um, and so that's basically the long and short of it. What I like to do, so I'm going to show you in, if I go to my, my Screencastify account, so here it is on Drive. So again, this is what, if I shared it with somebody, they would be able to see it. Um, I can also allow for commenting. So um, I, could, uh, I could share this with, with Catherine, and she could jump on and um, give me feedback using the comment tool, which can be really useful, okay? Um, I can download it here. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Well, I didn't mean to do that either. I'm going to go back and view, view on Jamboard. Okay, and I can uh, I can organize so I can put it in different places on my on my uh, on my drive um, and do some various things as well with that. Okay, so if I organize it, 
So I like it. So I'm going to open my Screencastify because I'm going to show you one more trick. So here's my Screencastify folder. This is every every video that I've created, and I made something like 300 and something less in 2020. Um, it's going to all go into this folder. So one of the things I like to do is I like to make the whole folder whole folder. Uh, I'm going to click. Ugh. It's taking its dear sweet time. So I'm going to go to the share option. And this is something because I know where my videos need to go and who has option of my videos. So I'm going to go to Screencastify. I'm going to go to sharing. I hope this is taking a bit of time because that's exciting. Um, maybe this is not going to happen this morning. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to do that. Oh, there. Okay, there it is. So what I'm going to do, so you can see that my folder is set with anybody within the Catholic school board can view my videos, which doesn't mean that they can go and find it through like they can hack into my my drive and find it that way. It means that if I've shared that very unique URL with them, they'll be able to see it. And I don't have to make sure that I've set the permissions for that individual video. It means that any screencast that I make can be viewed by anybody in the OCFB. Now remember that our students have um, a different domain. And so you have to share it with, um, you'd have to change that to anyone with the link. Okay, so again, that's something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna jump back here. And uh, again, all of this information is here in the uh, slide deck, okay? And um, so that tells you where they all go. Um, there's, oh, apparently we deleted this video. So we will get rid of that. Um, so here's a webinar that I did. It's much, much longer, kind of goes into much more detail and then how you can actually leverage something like Screencastify. And then um, if you wanna get more into Screencastify, there are two different types of certifications. There's a, a, a master and a genius. So one is just the basic tools of G, um, Screencastify. This is fully free, they send you a badge. Um, and then there's also a junior version that, uh, that you can do with students and it takes 10 minutes. And again, it's kind of a fun little thing that they can do. Again, it gives you something to do. So on a few different things. So what we're gonna do is, uh, again, uh, if you want a copy of these slides, um, it's yell key, like yell dot, turn the key dot com backslash arrive, like you have arrived. So if you go into that, you'll get a copy of, you can grab a copy of these slides. And the other thing we wanna draw your attention to is uh, Wake and I were talking this morning and we're like, maybe people want some help between eight and nine, I don't know. So we are going to go to this um, office hour uh, now at eight o'clock, if you would like to ask questions about Screencastify, about Jamboard, or if there's any other burning tech questions that you have before you get started today, uh, Wake and I are gonna be available at eight o'clock if you would like to join us. Um, so again, um, a little impromptu uh, office hours, uh, but that says, uh, so basically go to meet.google.com and then it'll ask you for a code. So your code is W-N-P-V-U-V-U-F-I-X. Okay, again, W-N-P-V. U B U F I X. So maybe we'll see you over there. If not, we do have office hours this afternoon or this morning at 1045. So there is a list. We'll make sure it gets created. You can also find it on the professional uh, development web website from the staff portal. And again, we're so happy that eight of you decided to join us or 10 actually it was up to 11 at one point um, that you decided to join us this morning to, um, to further your develop your tech skills and we're so proud of you You're doing a great job in a very strange environment um, and uh, apparently 2020 is all about new learning for you and we're really excited um, that you are taking these opportunities to, uh, to think differently about how you can how you can serve your students in a different environment so um, so thank you so much for being here this morning and uh, we will see you over on the other meet if you'd like to do this.